Burned. A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction, Part 16. Today's theme is Rose. If you have not heard the previous 15 parts of this story, you can find a link to them in the description box below. Now then, let's get burned. Oh, and like, subscribe if you haven't. Okay, thanks. Sunshine burned Cat Noir's shoulders as he waved at the crowd, smiling the same way a talk show host would while fighting hunger pains. He loved what he did with the mask on, but all he wanted was an ice cream cone and a movie. He and Ladybug were at a safety demonstration to brief citizens on Akuma lockdown situations. Thanks for yesterday, Ladybug whispered, knocking her hips with his as they waved. His show smile gained a glimmer of authenticity, and he shrugged. Wanna go for another round? He asked. It's only noon. In this heat? You must be crazy. So is Hog Moth. Recently, that was his answer to all of her retorts, and he found it hilarious. Ladybug, however, consistently broke eye contact to shake her head in dismay. He couldn't blame her. He hated putting up with himself some days. Honestly, all I want right now is some ice cream and cartoons. His heart skipped a beat at her words. Oh? May I join you? She looked up with a smirk. Oh, that wasn't fair. She was cuter than ever when she did that. No. What if I buy the ice cream? That got her attention. Well, I suppose a movie theater would have air conditioning too, she said. Cat Noir couldn't help but laugh, despite the witnesses. A quartet of girls screamed at him, breaking the mood. Oops. <laughs> Back to the standard smile. He followed her exit, wrapping behind the chimney to stay out of the public eye. Hey, he began. Were you serious? About the movie? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a bit of cabin fever. Oh. This was real. She was doing something with him. Maybe, just maybe... Their relationship progressed a bit? He didn't dare hope. I'll meet you at the theater in 20 minutes, okay? She said. Yeah, sure. Sounds great. That would give Plague enough time to revamp, and he could make sure his wallet didn't get trapped in his transformation. It was a good thing he had cash on him. There wasn't enough time to run to his bank, even with the suit on. He didn't know what was playing, but did it matter? It would be up to Ladybug, of course. Not that she dictated everything, but because he was whipped for her happiness. Healthy? Probably not. But she wouldn't abuse it. Fifteen minutes and a gripe from Plague later, Adrian was in the theater's restroom, transforming back to Cat Noir. Ironically, it was easier for him to slip in as a civilian idol than a masked one. He figured waiting for her outside would cause a scene. Of course, he couldn't get in here without buying a ticket, so he bought two tickets for each show playing. Over the top? Sure. But now he was prepared. A video call came through, jump-starting his heart. Hey, he said ruffling his hair as he answered. Hey, Ladybug answered. Where are you? In the restroom. Oh, same. I guess we had the same idea about going in. What movie do you want to see? I, I bought a ticket for that new comedy, but I'm down for that. Are you sure? I wouldn't mind seeing the one Clara Nightingale is in. What about both? Huh? Oh. Oops. The problem of having little experience hanging out with anyone? 
much less the girl he liked, who was not knowing things were awkward until after he suggested it. I mean, uh, never mind. Ladybug paused for a moment. Okay. Her answer was drawn out, but she nodded as though it weren't an awkward suggestion. To be honest, I'm procrastinating something, so I may as well. Meet you in the lobby? No, back of Theater 3. See you there. His heart fluttered as they hung up. A smile pressed to Cat Noir's face. He made his way to the back row of seats, as happy as a kid at a birthday party. He flashed a grin as they made eye contact, and it felt like they were kids skipping class at noonday for a moment. They'd done it. They'd gotten in without catching attention. That, and Ladybug patted the seat beside her to beckon him over. He might as well buy a ticket for the lottery. To be honest, Cat Noir couldn't remember the movie that much. It was some American movie dubbed over with sultry voices. Whenever Ladybug would comment or whisper a question, he would nod his head and smile, lost to the context. What he did remember, however, was the way her eyes lit up when a dog showed up on screen, and the way her nose crinkled as she tried to stifle a laugh at some slapstick routine. He didn't see the grandeur kiss, but he did watch her forefinger circle the tip of her thumb as she sat in anticipation. The second movie wasn't much better. That is, he didn't watch that one either. Instead, he picked at the theater food they'd bought, debating whether or not to hold her hand. Was it a bad idea? Sure. But so was giving kids bound by school schedules miraculous, and yet here they were. He could never tell what kind of oblivious Ladybug was. She was too smart to not pick up on his gestures, but either he was excellent as playing it off as a joke, or she was a fantastic actress. The only other option was she happened to be clueless when it came to romance. While it would serve in his favor now, Cat Noir hoped the last idea wasn't the case. Well, that was fun, Ladybug said turning to flash a smile at him. Yeah, he replied. He couldn't remember if it was or not, but sure. Fun. I think that rose was a good choice, don't you think? Yeah, it was a good clue that she liked him. It's a shame we don't see more girl pursues boy in mainstream media, don't you think? I wouldn't mind it. Cat said, breaking eye contact. He'd die if Ladybug even asked him on a real date. I wish it were that simple, Ladybug sighed, crossing her arms. You don't think a guy would be ecstatic to get a rose from you? She shook her head. It would take more than a rose to sweep me off my feet, so why would it work for a guy I'm pursuing? Are you pursuing a guy? Huh? It didn't sound like you were talking in past or future tense. Her face flushed, catching him off guard. He'd only meant to tease her, not to find out she liked someone else. That's, uh, none of your business. His hair stood on edge, her words cold to his heart. Cat looked away, ready to change the subject. So, if not roses, something else? He asked, opening the exit for her. Hmm. Ladybug squinted as the sunlight reflected off the pavement. I don't know. What about your hobbies? Huh? Like, a ball of yarn would be romantic for someone who knits. Or a self-cleaning litter box for a girl who has two cats. I don't have two cats. You know what I mean. I guess, yeah, that's much better than a rose.
What if that's what the rose represents, then? It's... I don't know you well enough to get you anything else. It's... It's... I don't know you well enough to get anything else. But I'd like to. So here's a rose to show you that I'm willing to get you yarn or a litter box. Just as soon as I learn more about you. You're really reading into this, aren't you, Kitty? I'm fighting on behalf of partners everywhere. She laughed at his retort, as he knew she would. Despite his efforts, she wouldn't change her mindset of their relationship. He meant every word, but so what? Cat Noir gave his love a wave goodbye as she zipped away, sighing with awe. He didn't know the line between liking someone and love, but surely he'd crossed it, right? Was it hopeless? What could he do? What should he do? Kat sighed and looked around, eyes falling on the storefront beside him. That was it. He'd buy her a rose. Thank you so much for listening. You can click a playlist or a video for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.